Now, Washington mornings on the mall at AM 630. Good morning. Happy Thursday to 837. Brian Eamon, Brian Wilson with you. And the referee debacle saga is finally over with the NFL. The league and the union representing the referees came to a... Keep very quick, agreement very quick night, agreement yeah. from what uh, it has been reported this morning. And they will be on the field tonight when uh, Thursday night football kicks off in Baltimore and the Browns and the Ravens play. And they will be there for Sunday's games as well. Joe Theismann joins us now, former quarterback in the National Football League, of course, and a great Washington Redskin. Joe, how are you? Good to have you back on the show. I'm good, guys. Good morning. All right. So uh, this thing ended I, we were joking earlier that uh, this may be the first time in the history of professional sports that the referees actually get cheered and maybe even get a state ovation when they're uh, shown on the Jumbotron tonight. If I was doing the game, I certainly would. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, and they might even get a standing ovation, just get cheered, because you know, it, maybe it took uh, what we saw in the Green Bay-Seattle game to get the owners to understand that the product was being tarnished tremendously. I mean, you look at the Redskin game, you look at the San Francisco game, the New England game, and you go on and on and on at different instances. And it's not just the, the inefficiency with which the referees did their job. It was their lack of understanding of our game that became, I think, a very dangerous environment for players. And it's great that it's been resolved. All right. Do you think uh, this stain is just temporary or will it last? Or can you get, you know, get a bottle of Resolve out and get it out of your carpet? Will it go away for, over I think time? It'll go away. I think it will go away only because uh, it will go away until the playoffs come up. Because, remember, the last two world champions were both 9-7 and seven in the regular season, sure. Green Bay and the Giants. Well, if you're 8-8, eight and eight, you miss the playoffs. Now, that game in Seattle or that game uh, for, Seattle and for Green Bay and that game for New England, that could determine a playoff spot. It could determine home field advantage. Because wow. we only play 16 games. See, I don't think anybody's looking 13 weeks down at the end of the season and saying, okay, what will the Green Bay Packer record be? Yeah. If it's one game, if it's a one game difference between Chicago or Detroit, or, you know, it, it, let's say it goes to a tiebreaker in the NFC where you wind up with, you know, possibly Seattle and Green Bay in, involved in some type of a tiebreaker. I mean, it does, it will have ramifications. Yeah. I haven't thought about that, but that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. For the next 10, 11 weeks, I think we're, you know, we're back to uh, football as we know it. It'll take about a week to start criticizing these guys, but they'll have a, a, a week or so to be able to and enjoy everybody's appreciation. Hey, speaking of that, and you said you were, if you were broadcast tonight, you would you would cheer the referees. John Lynch, who now does games for Fox, he used to obviously be a great uh, safety for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, said he thought he they, they the, the announcers were duped by the NFL because they said, hey, guys, go easy on these referees. These replacement refs were kind of close to a deal. It, it's going to be resolved. And he thought they were flat out lied to by the NFL. I'm just curious. When you did Monday Night Football and you were working for ESPN, did you ever get anything from or memo from the NFL? Is there are there are there, are there communications that go on the back that uh, you're not? No, no. I I think if I'm a network and I pay you billions of billions, not not millions, billions of right. dollars, I have the right to be able to be honest to the fans. Now my my approach was always this: my obligation as an announcer was to the fans. They're the ones that I think deserve an honest opinion. And think of it, the guys that are in the booth bring NFL experience. If you're going to tell me what to say, you may as well sit the talking head up there that doesn't know anything anyway, which some of them don't. (laughs) But but you get a chance now to be able to say, hey, look, this is wrong. I thought John Gruden and Mike Tirico did a terrific job. Now, John's untouchable, to be honest with you. I mean, he's a former coach. He understands the game, and I I thought he did a, a terrific job in a very political way, just emphasizing the fact of the horrificness of the calls that were in the Seattle Green Bay game. All right, so give me your straight-from-the-shoulder assessment of what's going on with the Redskins, specifically RG3, a guy with a great deal of talent. Everybody agrees the guy's talented, but he's taken an awful lot of hits out there. Are you concerned about him? Yes, I am. I'm very concerned. Uh, I believe last week's game there were 70 offensive snaps he got hit on 28 of them, six sacks, I believe 12 carries, and 10 other of the options that were run. And when you're, you're talking about a quarterback getting hit over 40% of the plays in a game, I'm concerned if it continues to 
to look like it did last week, he won't make it to week eight. You physically cannot take that kind of pounding. I'm very curious about this game. Each game is sort of taken on its own personality in my mind for the Redskins. The first one in New Orleans was, let's see what it looks like. The second one in St. Louis was, they've always been a pain in our rear end. They still are. The third one against Cincinnati, Cincinnati couldn't stop anybody. We're having trouble stopping someone, so it became a scoring fest. Each game now is an identity. This game, to me, is you can't continue to get your quarterback hit with option plays. So what you're basically going to have to do is change your offensive philosophy and start dropping him back in the pocket, moving him around a little bit, putting him someplace where he doesn't take those punishing hits all the time. So once again, in our fourth game of the season, we have to see what the Redskins are going to do and how they're going to react to protecting their quarterback. Well, you, you are a, a, a great quarterback, but you, you can only be a great quarterback if you have time in the pocket, if you have time to do what a quarterback should do. And he doesn't have that time. Well, he, he, you know, I mean, yeah, he didn't have a lot of time. And, you know, but taking, taking hits on sacks when you're sort of going to the ground is different than running an option down yeah. the line of scrimmage. And you've got a defensive end who's told by a coach, I don't care about the pitch man. Just level this kid. They're 285, 290-pound guys or 270 flying up the field, and all they want to do is not the living daylights at you. What we saw in the Cincinnati game was something very different than you see in college football. Robert ran that offense in college football, and the defensive ends didn't get on him quick enough so that he couldn't make a pitch. Twice in the Redskin game, that end was up the field so fast, one ball was thrown behind, uh, I believe, Banks. The other one, he didn't even get out of his hand. It wound up being fumbled. Yeah, that, and, and, they, and they got his, his number on that pretty quick. Oh, yeah, it, it, believe me. You know, we tend to not give defensive coordinators enough credit to study people. For example, Cam Newton down in Carolina ran this play a fair amount last year. Every defensive coach in football now has studied the spread option Mm -hmm. or the pistol option or whatever you want to call it. So they have an idea. But, you know, our season is so much longer. The players are so much better you cannot survive as an option quarterback in the National Football League. Robert's acceler- Robert's going to have to accelerate his learning process in the pocket for him to stay alive and I think for the Redskins to develop the other aspect of their offense. Joe, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Look forward to talking to you later down the road. Anytime, guys. Thanks. And Joe Theismann, former Washington Redskins greats, and happy just like everybody else is that the regular refs will be on the field tonight. Ah, 